I don't think it's really possible to surprise yourself by just doing everything that you've done before. <laughs> so, which is pretty logical. Hey dancers, it's Kirsten. Welcome back to the Confident Dancer YouTube channel. So, as a high performance mindset coach, you know me, I love to help dancers shift their mindset in order to feel their best and perform their best. In my one-on-one -on -one work with clients, I do a lot of work on the deeper layers of someone's mind to help them sustainably build confidence, overcome self-doubt, performance anxiety, whatever's stopping them from performing at their personal best level and feeling their best. But there are some shifts that can be made to one's mindset that are simple and they make an immediate difference. We love a quick tip, don't we? We love some instant gratification. So I'm gonna share some of those with you today. In particular, I will be sharing three mindset shifts that you can make in order to instantly perform better. So if you're into that, keep on watching. Okay, the first tip is gonna be like, no duh, really, it's that simple? Yes, it is. And I'm gonna tell you, tip number one is to focus on what you want. Why am I saying that? Because if you start to observe yourself, observe your thoughts, observe your self-talk, you will probably notice that you are spending more time than you maybe thought on thinking of what you don't want. Like telling yourself, don't mess up. Oh, I don't want to make a mistake. Oh, I don't want to embarrass myself in front of that teacher. Oh, I don't want my classmates to judge me. How much airtime are you giving to those thoughts instead of focusing on how do I want to feel in this class today? How do I want to interpret this combination? How much airtime are you giving to those thoughts? I would highly recommend that you consider asking it to yourself and just become aware of when you are focusing on what you don't want and start shifting to, okay, okay, I know I don't want that, but what do I want? Now, let me tell you from a psychological perspective why this is really important. In order for our brains to comprehend our thoughts or what we're saying to ourselves, our brains have to come up oftentimes with a picture, a sound, or a feeling, or all three, that are associated with the words that we're telling ourselves. So if we say, oh man, I don't want to mess up, what is it that's coming to your mind? Probably a picture of you in your mind messing up and then a feeling that comes up as a result of like whew, fear, tension, stress. The mind, the subconscious mind specifically, doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's vividly imagined. It will respond emotionally all the same. It will respond to that imagery in your head as if it's actually happening. At least on some level, it might not be as intense depending on how strong the visual was, but what's happening is basically you are rehearsing the outcome that you don't want. Now, why does that matter? Now, I want to say before I get into that, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because you had an image in your head that you need to fear that, oh my gosh, it's going to come true. There is a lot of truth to the idea of self-fulfilling prophecies. So the more you focus on not wanting to make a mistake, the more likely you are to be really focused on what it would look like, feel like, all that stuff to make the mistake the less time you are focusing on what you would do to help yourself not make that mistake, or rather, to be even more specific, how you do want to execute a certain movement you're worried about. And then also, by focusing on what you don't want, you are causing your nervous system to respond to that imagery that might bring up fear, stress, tension. Do we dance well when we are fearful, stressed, and tense? No, we don't dance as well, right? So why it's so important to notice when you're focusing on what you don't want and just gently bring yourself back to answering the question, what do I want? Is because you will then allow your brain to pull up a visual of here's what I want. You also have conscious clarity around what you want so then you can make choices to make that happen. You can say, okay, well, how am I going to help myself hold that balance? How am I going to choose to interpret this character? So it, it is engaging the conscious mind and it's engaging your creativity. It's helping you to be empowered, which empowerment is just an awareness of your power to make choices that make a difference. So it's helping you in these ways, 
And then also by pulling up this imagery and allowing feelings, positive feelings to come up in response, you are actually making your subconscious mind, your brain more familiar with the outcome that you want instead of more familiar and comfortable with the outcome that you don't want. In other words, you're also mentally rehearsing this outcome. So just start to give more and more attention to that question. What do I want? And you will actually notice a difference in your, probably the way you feel on the inside, the clarity around how you can help yourself to create more successful outcomes. When your destination is clear, the steps reveal themselves much more clearly on how you can get there. When you're just focusing on, I don't want to mess up, that doesn't really help you to create empowered solutions necessarily to help you have a beautiful outcome. It's just focusing on how to avoid what you don't want, which is very fear-based. Mindset shift number two is to focus on your intentions rather than your expectations. The deal is with expectations is that they tend to be associated with very rigid thinking. This very either or way of thinking where it's like, this is what's good, like this is what it means to have a good show. And maybe the way you're defining that consciously or unconsciously is making no mistakes. That's kind of almost like taking a test where it's you pass or you fail. It's 100% or nothing. If you were to take a test in school where it was like, if you don't make 100%, then you fail, uh, you would probably feel pretty stressed about your ability to pass that test. And if you were really stiff and stressed and anxious, it would probably be more difficult to focus on how you would pass the test. The same thing can happen in a dance setting. We can come in with all these expectations, a lot of them we're probably not even aware of. We can tend to hold expectations for ourselves like this, even without being very aware that we're holding ourselves to that. And a good sign is if you feel really bad about yourself for making a mistake, if you feel like you make one too many mistakes and the whole day is trash, the rehearsal was trash, it was all bad. Those are signs that you're putting pressure on yourself Pressure tends to come from having strict expectations of yourself. Now, by shifting into intentions, it doesn't mean that you have to value excellence any less. We're just shifting basically from this perfection mindset to being intentional and moving towards excellence. Perfection and excellence are similar. One is just actually attainable and the other is not. So you can still, by having intentions, say, that you care about your final product, that you care about doing a good job. It's great that you care. Intentions are great because they kind of turn this black and white way of thinking of like, you either meet your expectation or you don't. And rather it helps you to celebrate that you're moving towards a certain outcome. So an example of an intention versus an expectation is an intention might sound like, I want to, um, uh, have an experimental attitude in class. Like I want to experiment with pushing my boundaries. That is an intention you could carry into every single combination. Notice that I didn't say, I expect myself to absolutely push past my boundaries in every combination. Now, a lot of us don't say things like that to ourselves, but expectations can be very sneaky. I often hear it um, in dancers language when they say, well, I just want to do my best every day. I hear that a lot, honestly. But how realistic is it to do your best every day? And what does doing your best even mean? Like how specific are you with that definition? And it, it, is it a definition that's attainable, that you created for yourself, that you actually want? Or is it something that you feel pressure to be or to fulfill? So instead, an intention can look like saying, today I want to experience joy as I dance and to let that joy flow out of my dancing. Now that's very specific. It's something that you can measure. Like, did I, did I do that? Did I see a difference? but it doesn't require an absolute, like an absolute success in every single combination. Or there's no rigidity as well. If, if you feel like you kind of didn't do that in one combination, there's enough mental flexibility there to be like, okay, well, what can I learn from that? How can I just kind of move back on track? So see how in the intention mindset, there's less pressure. There's more intention on making empowered choices, learning from when you feel like you didn't quite move in the direction you wanted. It's a lot less stressful. And I think you'll be able to enjoy yourself more, make empowered choices, focus on what you want. It definitely helps with step one. And to just, yeah, take off that pressure that's probably inhibiting 
and your ability to dance well. Hey dancers, I just wanted to briefly interrupt this video to tell you that if you are tired of struggling with things like performance anxiety, self-doubt, overthinking, not being able to dance well and be in the flow and enjoy the moment because you're so in your head, you know, different mental struggles like this, I want to let you know that you don't have to keep struggling with that. And of course, these videos that I make are here to help you make a difference. But if you want to take this to the next level and really create profound, sustainable change in your confidence, your mental well-being, and your ability to consistently perform your personal best by working on your mind, then I have an opportunity for you. As a coach, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching to help you really transform your mindset in order to do all those things I just mentioned. So this is for pre-professional and professional ballet dancers. And if you're interested in working with me, a mindset coach certified in neurolinguistic programming and a few other modalities, I would love for you to look into the Confident Dancer Coaching Program, which is my one-on-one -on -one program to really help you build authentic, sustainable confidence, genuine mental well-being, and to help you have the mental strategies to perform your best consistently. So if you're really interested in that, I invite you to click the link down below to my website, kirstenkemp.com. A different URL, same website, theconfidentdancer.com. They lead to the same place. And that's where you can learn more about my individual coaching services and book a free 30 minute consultation to chat with me. We can connect, talk about your goals, your challenges you wanna overcome and see if working together would be a great fit. So let's get back into the video. Mindset shift number three is to use the let's just see approach. For short, this is really the experimental mindset. It is so helpful right before you're doing something challenging, right before you do it, instead of ruminating on, oh, what if I can't do it? Oh, that's hard. Uh, uh. You know, again, focusing on what you don't want. Instead, say, well, let's just see what can happen. What's cool about that is you're opening your mind to putting your energy into it, trying something new, taking risks without demanding that you do it perfectly. And it's so helpful when you have this pressure taken off and you open your mind to say, well, you know, what if it went well? Why not? Let's just see. It's amazing how your energy can shift to being a lot more willing to put a little more force into that turn and maybe get three out of it instead of two. Or to also not discount yourself or underestimate yourself habitually. I used to notice that a lot in myself and I've seen it in other dancers too. Highly competent, intelligent, strong dancers chronically underestimating themselves. You know, and that doesn't mean they're not working hard. I was certainly working very hard in my training, but I would really underestimate very frequently what I could be capable of. I would kind of put caps on my potential, like, oh, I'm not a turner, so like, mm, I probably wouldn't be good at that variation. But what I was doing is I was shielding myself from trying and, you know, being vulnerable and trying and maybe not meeting the mark that I wanted to meet. So this is a great way to open your mind and also be vulnerable enough to just try something and put your whole energy into it and see what happens. You know, in this mindset, you don't need total certainty that you're going to be able to do it to just try. And it's amazing that when you don't even stop to assess like, can I do this or can I not? You're like, well, let's just see. It's amazing how much more willing you are to really throw yourselves into movements and how this actually helps you to give yourself the chance to surprise yourself, honestly. I love that idea of like, give yourself a chance to surprise yourself. How often are we actually giving ourselves the chance to be like, whoa, I did that. You can really only surprise yourself if you actually try something that's more than you thought you could do. Has that ever occurred to you? Like, you, you probably not, I don't think it's really possible to surprise yourself by just doing everything that you've done before. <laughs> so, which is pretty logical. So try the let's just see approach, this experimental mindset, and see how much more you're able to nail in your classes, auditions, performances, whatever you have coming up. Okay, dancers, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know. Give this video a thumbs up, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Share this with some dancer friends that you think would also enjoy this content. And that's all I got for you. Subscribe to stick around for next week's video, and I'll see you then. All right, bye.